back everybody. I have again with me Angelo. We will look this week at the Divinity of Christ in a continuation of the previous videos and we shall look specifically at the worship of Christ and the worship of the triune God in the Old Testament. And Angelo, what have you got to say about that? Yes, so worship is uh, an action that is done exclusively towards God. And there is no way that, no meaning that you can ascribe to this uh, verb that can be acceptable towards a man. So there are variants of uh, worshipping, which is, they aren't really worshipping. They are uh, either um, recognizing an authority, so you, you pay the respect, uh, you, you have this uh, reverence towards someone, but worship is for God alone. And the Bible is very clear about this. There are examples, though, of both situations in the Bible, worshipping God and showing this reverence towards an authority. We will look, though, at how when it happens that some man worships another man, it is immediately dismissed by, let's say, uh, by the believers, as in something unacceptable. So let's first look at the book of Acts. Acts 10, 25, 26. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. So Peter that was one of the greatest uh, apostles recognized by Jesus, let's say. He was given the keys, says Jesus, to the kingdom of heaven. He's, uh, he's saying to this, uh, to this man, Cornelius, stand up, don't, don't worship me, I'm, I'm just a man. You shouldn't do that, I, I'm not God. And it is, uh, it is exactly what we said. The m m believers, when they see this happening, they say, no, that's wrong. You shouldn't do it. And this is why Peter says, don't do it, basically. Okay. What I have is a correct example of uh, falling down, as it were. And it's from Genesis 17.3. And it's a very short verse. And it says, Abraham fell face down and God said to him. So God continues this conversation. He doesn't say, oh, my gosh, what are you doing? Um, yeah, it's the correct form of, of prostration. Yes. And we will, okay, let's look also at another, uh, Revelation 19.10. This, in this case, the object of worship is not a man, as in Peter, but in this case, it is an angel. So Jesus said that any uh, uh, lesser, let's say, the lowest of the kingdom of heaven, he didn't specify whether it was angels or, or saints, but the lowest is greater than uh, than John the Baptist in that case, whom he identified as the greatest of born of a woman. So even these creatures of heaven who are supposed to be greater than men, this is what they say when they are worshipped. They say, so in the Revelation 19.10, the angel, and I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See that you do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers that have testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So even the angel says, when he sees that somebody is worshipping him, don't worship me because I am not the God. This form of worship which you are doing, I'm stopping you from doing it, because you should do it only to, to Yahweh, to God, right? Yeah, I have Ezekiel one twenty eight, which is the um, final verse in that chapter, and that the second part of that says, "This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell face down, and I heard the voice of one speaking." The following two verses are also relevant, which is Ezekiel two one and two. He said to me, son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the spirit came into me and raised me to my feet and I heard him speaking to me. 
So we know that he was prostrate from not only from the former birth, but from the fact that the spirit came and raised him to his feet. So the act of worship was complete and then the communication begins. Yeah, exactly. So it is something acceptable towards God when he receives this worship, he is pleased, the spirit didn't have a negative reaction or God didn't, didn't have a negative reaction. He said, yes, okay, now let, let, us, let us continue with what I have to say to you. One more example of this, still in Revelation, Revelation 22, 8 to 9. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then he said unto me, See that you do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. The same as in chapter 19, the angel is saying, when he is receiving worship, don't do that because this worship is not suitable for me. I am a creation myself. I am with, uh, together with your brothers that bear testimony of Jesus. You should worship God. Okay, and just one more verse I'm going to read. It's not on screen, but just to give you an example how the other the other uh, sense is used, as in um, paying respect to an authority. So in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, for example, when uh, David David met Saul, uh, it is First Samuel twenty four verse eight. Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My lord, the king, when Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. So this is not worship. David wasn't worshipping Saul, but it was merely recognizing his position, paying his respects. Right? Um, and yeah, there, there's many of this, but these are the two senses in, in which it can be used. Yeah. So now let's look at Luke 24, 50 to 52. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. Now during the blessing, he departed and was taken up into heaven. So they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Here's Jesus being taken up to heaven. The people around him, they are all worshipping him on his way to heaven. Jesus didn't say, don't do it. <laughs> he didn't stop them from the worship that they were giving. Yeah. There, this is no um, prostration as in the one we just read, because Jesus didn't come with a, dis like a human display of authority, as in him wearing a crown or having a a palace and saying, you know, now this is the procedure to approach me. You should bow down. And there's none of this. He's merely, you know, an ordinary man. He wasn't dressing particularly uh, royal or anything that people should come to him and prostrate to him in that sense, right? So yeah. they worship him and he, he doesn't stop them. Yeah. Well, I also have the words of Christ uh, from Matthew 4.10. And Christ says, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And we know that uh, Christ wasn't slow in rebuking people who were uh, uh, failing to adhere to the teachings of uh, either covenant, actually. So the fact that he says worship God alone and then accepts worship, or at least doesn't rebuke it, indicates that he sees himself as God and that he's declaring himself to be God in that action. Yes, and given the character of Jesus, not rebuking it means that he accepts it. In the same way God, when speaking to Abraham, does not rebuke him, but accepts it by, you know, continue his dialogue and actually lifting him up in the sense of, uh, you know, and take courage in that sense, because the meeting with God is something extraordinary for men anyway. So given this, the fact that Jesus doesn't stop people from their worship, 
because Jesus was actually showing them, you know, what they should do, and the fruits of the Spirit, and so on. It means that he was accepting it. Let's look at next verse. Matthew 2.2 2, um, Saying, Where is he that is born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we are come to worship him. So in this case, in this case, it's a bit of a mixture, right? The mages recognize the royal authority, Jesus being the king, but they also throw in, let's say in their phrase, we have come to worship the king, to prostrate to the king, right? And yeah, this is one event. It's a, probably the only event where both the kingship the authority of christ is recognized and his divine nature is recognized even though here it's not explicitly said but in the following verses it will be even more clear okay so what i have here is philippians uh, chapter 3 verse 3 and it says for it is we who are the circumcision we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. Um, so yeah, it's another example of worshiping uh, the triune God, actually, the Spirit, the Father, and the Son. Yes. Also, it says in one verse of the Bible, um, let's see, it is in Romans, yeah, Romans one twenty five. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. So, worshipping any created things, even the angels are created things, they don't want worship, they don't accept worship. Men, even, such as the apostles, like the ones who were in close contact with Jesus, they don't accept worship. Yet, Jesus, in this first occurrence in Luke, he accepts worship. Yeah. In, in Matthew, he is obviously uh, a baby. He cannot had, have any reaction to it. But the mages recognize him and come to worship him. I'd like to just so, sorry, to point out that worship of the Creator is, according to John 1 at least, and to all Christians, um, worship of Christ or the Word. So, yeah. Yep. So, another verse. John 9, 35, 38. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out and finding him, he said, do you believe in the son of God? He answered, who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you have both seen him and it is he who speaks with you. He said, Lord, I believe and he worshiped him. So the son of God, right? it, it is again not presenting as a, human authority the son of god is a divine authority and this man the 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 blind man who was healed is now worshiping him yeah. and jesus reaction is not the one of peter is not the one of the angel stop it and worship god because i didn't do it by uh my own uh, power my own initiative but i'm just uh you know, I'm just a messenger. You should worship the actual creator of the message. Uh, he's he's saying, you know, do you believe in me? And he says yes, and they worship, and he worships him, and he says he he doesn't rebuke him. And as as we said, the uh, the not rebuke given Jesus' character, it is an acceptance. He doesn't need to say, I accept your worship. Actually, not even God does that. He he has some verses where he instructs the correct way of approaching him because he is holy. But now that Jesus is among us, his, you know, his name is Emmanuel, then he he doesn't need to do that. He just, you know, we worship him even in the flesh. Yeah. So I have uh, John 4, uh, 24, but I'm actually going to read uh, 23 as well so it says but a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will follow the father in spirit and in truth we know that christ by the way is referred to as the truth by himself 
Uh, for the Father is seeking such as these to worship him. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. And to my reading, that's another example of the triunity of God anyway, the spirit, um, the truth and, you know, yeah, basically, yeah, spirit and truth encompasses all of them and the Father is referenced in 23. So, yeah. yeah, so all acts of worship are again referred to God. There's a few more verses. Let's look at Matthew 28, 9. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, greetings. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. So this is after Jesus' resurrection, when he shows himself to the apostles. This is actually even more explicit than the others in terms of what Jesus is saying, because in the others, he is merely, let's say, quiet in the sense of, I accept what you are, you know, the, the worship that you are now performing, I will not interrupt it and I will accept it and I will let you proceed. Here, however, we see even we see his response to the worship. So, in all other cases, there is no explicit response from Jesus, but just the acceptance, as in silence, not interrupting, because every created thing interrupted the worship when they are worship. Jesus didn't. In this case, it is, it is even more evident. Matthew twenty-eight nine is the disciples worshiping him. Matthew twenty-eight ten is his response then jesus said unto them be not afraid go and tell my brethren that they go into galilee and there they will see me so when it is similar to the passage you read about abraham the spirit is the comforter in the bible so this the spirit raising abraham up is is saying you know is it, is, it is similar to be not afraid. You know, the spirit is the, the means by which we can have a com communion with God. And he is the one that, you know, gives peace, basically. He re reassures, he comforts. And Jesus here says, when he, he was dead, now they saw him die. And now they, um, they see him alive. He says, when he's worshipped, he says, don't be afraid. You know, somebody just came back from the dead. He appeared, you know, he, he, he comes and, and meets us. He still has the, the injuries, the, the wounds of the crucifixion. And of course, they recognize that he's not just any man. And, you know, even if he were, uh, he were a man, then why does he accept this worship? He says, don't be afraid. He blesses them as in, yes this is good you have you, you are worshiping me because you should i am you know i am god you, you can worship me right yeah. yeah so in revelation 14 7 there is a reason to fear god it says he said in a loud voice fear god and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come so that's the reason and then worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. And we know that nothing was created that was not created by Christ or for him or through him. So, yeah, that just confirms what you're saying. And that's the final verse that I've got, by the way. So Yeah, me too. So to wrap up, any, we have repeated it a lot, uh, we'll say it in, in conclusion, every creature that is um, that is under god's under god you know under his authority they believe they are either men who believe or they are angels who serve him they all recognize that they should not be worshipped jesus also being the special case that we are analyzing he is also showing his um while he's on earth, he shows the the he points people to the Father, and uh, not merely to him. He says, you know, pray to the Father in my name. But the in other verses, say whatever you ask in my name, I will do. So it's the whole Trinity, uh, let's say, unfolding. But um, yeah, so Jesus in, in 
the act of being worshipped, he blesses the people who worship him and don't re- doesn't he doesn't rebuke them. And we've seen that we've seen examples of of, uh, of all these things. So we must conclude that if Jesus is truthful, and and uh, you know if he's not a creation and and he accepts torture, he must be God. If he were that just a mere man then he would have definitely stopped the blind men from um, worshipping him. The people on the boat after the storm, he would have stopped them from worshipping him. And also, in uh, the, in this case, the disciples, he would have stopped them from worshipping him. But yeah. he doesn't, because he knows who he is. Yeah, and so do we. So one quick point I would just pick up when you said if Jesus isn't a creation. So obviously there's the verse that says firstborn over creation. Um, but the one that I'd point out is the one that I've already quoted, which is through him and by him, all things were made. All things were created through or by him, thereby excluding him from the possible uh, creation. He can't be a creation if he is the creator. So, yeah. Yeah. And we have also verses for that, which we'll, we'll explain in another video. Definitely. I look forward to it. Okay. So I'd like to thank you for your time and I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Uh, please do remember to subscribe, comment, like, and share. And we'll be back with some more divinity of Christ. There can't be any more divinity of Christ because he is a hundred percent divine whilst being a hundred percent man. But that's another story that we'll continue to tell another time. Thanks very much and God bless. Bye-bye.